Hi everybody. A chocolate car. The tiny little chocolate car has no wheels or windows and bodywork that's like a sweet wrapper. Everything inside the car is made of chocolate. The engine, the battery, the little pipes and cables, the petrol, the oil, the water, the brake fluid, the steering wheel, the handbrake, the gear stick, the foot controls, the dashboard, the carpeting, the seats and seat belts, the sweet wrappers in the door compartments, the door compartments, the driver and passengers, their flesh and their blood and their bones, the brains in their heads, the food in their stomachs, the feces in their bowels, the urine in their bladders, their clothes, the dirt on their shoes, as well as absolutely all of the empty spaces in the car are made entirely out of chocolate. The chocolatey smell that escapes from the car's body shell is the perfume worn by the chocolate woman who sits in the chocolate passenger seat completely engulfed in chocolate. She smiles to herself with chocolate lips over chocolate teeth in a mouth that's crammed chock full of chocolate. She smiles because she can sense that she's pregnant with an embryo that's a minuscule, errant, miraculous bubble of air. So I'm going to do a few poems, some from my first book, some from my second book. I've now lost the piece of paper which <clears throat> I'd carefully written a list of what I was going to read on. Uh, I found it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say much about my poems. I discovered that I've learned that people's misunderstandings of my poems are often more interesting than what I'd intended. <laughs> I, read, I read somebody talking about one of my poems on the internet, and I was very flattered, he said he liked it, but then as I read on, I realised he'd completely misconstrued it. And I thought maybe I should, I still had the manuscript to my second book, I could fiddle about with it, and I thought maybe I should make the poem clearer, but then I realised that actually i better leave it as it is as what he thought was more interesting than what I intended. So, <coughs> this poem is um, it's called The Fly. No, it's not. It's called The Life Cycle of the Fly. The house fly on the ceiling, his maggot does the thinking. His maggot is the undried fly, the dreamy fly that lives inside the black and brittle crate and is its creamy pilot. It swells itself on levers to make the wings buzz, to make the legs go, to move the rough eyes about and send out the long lips to make itself seen by that pappy grub of the other sex who's loose inside her derelict box of blackened wood. So the glint of her a glimpse of her white give is given through the timber's winking split. Before she was boxed and grey ribbon bowed with wings, the maiden maggot writhed as though she was in pain and fit to pop. She seemed to me to throw her own self off herself, or to take issue with her own will, or to find the air disgusting, but au contraire she was laughing her smile being all teeth, the segments each a tooth. I loved you as that maggot that you were, and licked you shone my one. You were not yet the fly you would become, the morning black contraption which arises on the other side of the pupa's brown casket to carry off the cargo of her doughy soul. How bleak she looks, the fly ensconcing, as she does, all the burnished lacquer of her worm. The iron. An iron is exactly like a dog. 
a flat-bellied, hard and legless dog with neither bite, nor bark, nor mouth, but with a tail which may be plugged into a socket. <laughs> As it's moved across damp clothing, an iron is attached to its user by an arm. That arm is like a dog's thick leash, a leash that's attached to the shoulder of someone with no arm. <laughs> An iron is like a dog that when it goes for a walk never hesitates for long in one place for fear of setting fire to the ground. <laughs> as its point is moved carefully around an obstacle such as a button, an iron is like a dog sniffing around another dog's genitals. And when it's left to cool, an iron is like a dog that rests on its rear end, its non-existent eyes staring up at the ceiling in amazement at its unlikely position. Mm. <laughs>